Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. As part of your knowledge series, today we'll be discussing about the causes of the French Revolution. When we talk about world history itself, in world history there are two very, very important topics, which is American Revolution and French Revolution. They are generally connected with each other, which I'll show you the connection. But basically, when we talk about world history, French Revolution, you, two, three questions have also come over a period of time. Though the course itself has no purpose, the four different constitutions, 1791, 93, 95 and 99, which were produced. But the causes becomes very important. That is why we are going to concentrate on that. So let's talk about the French Revolution. In order to understand the causes and generally everything related to the French Revolution, you need to understand France first. So when we talk about the on the eve or for example 1700 France, there are certain peculiarities which are linked up with it and therefore they become the long term causes. So there are two types of causes which we are going to discuss. First, the long term and second, the immediate ones. And the immediate are technically connected to the long term, but somehow students what they do is they concentrate more on immediate, we'll try to understand the long term and that will be the base on which we'll try to understand the French Revolution itself. So the first and foremost thing is in 1700 itself, France has the second largest population in continental Europe at this point of time. And it is a society, it's a country which though rejected feudalism, it came out of the feudal system, but somehow it was stuck socially in that order or in a modified feudal order, order in that regard. Basically, French society was very, very backward and actually sh looked like a feudalistic society. And I'm going to build up on this, which is which we call as the ancient regime or ancient regime. This is not the wrong spelling. It's the French spelling, ancient regime. We need to understand the peculiarities in the ancient regime, its representative institutions, in order to understand why would there will be explosive situation in 1789. So basically it has come out of feudalism but sh gives a very similar picture of feudalism. On the other hand, they are ruled by the Bourbons, the Bourbon dynasty itself. You have Louis XV and XVI who are the most important for us. Louis XV who was more or less very active during the 1750s and all. And thereafter we have Louis XVI, one of the most useless rulers in that regard. But basically the ancient regime, it's the so society of France is something which actually gives us an understanding of why the French Revolution will actually going to happen. So let's talk about the ancient regime itself or the ancient regime itself that why would a revolution such as the French Revolution happen in such a culturally bound French French society or in France itself. So let's talk about the ancient regime. In order to understand that, we need to understand how the French society was divided. So basically, the whole French society was like a pyramid. You have at the apex, the king, none other than Louis XV or XVI, and he had a very close relationship with the church. The Catholic Church at this point of time had a lot of control over Louis XV and XVI. However, they were technically absolutist monarchs. Absolutist monarchs means that all power resided in them and they controlled every aspect of administration, society, economy, everything. But still, the peculiarity in France is that the church had a lot of leeway and a lot of control over the king itself. So this is the apex, this is at the tip. Under the king, you have the first order who are the clergy and the first strata. In French, this word strata is actually called estate, meaning first estate, first estate, second estate, third estate. Estate word actually just means strata or order. So the first estate of the French society or the first social order was the clergy. Clergy means the bureaucracy of the church. So you have bishop, archbishop, different type of priests, they become the first estate of the society. Church bureaucracy, church own administrative control, its administration was the first estate, meaning that the king was 
technically very close to the church but also the first order was the church officials themselves. Then comes the second estate and the second estate was none other than the aristocrats or the words which the French use is nobility. Nobility is either you can buy an office into the administration of the empire. So you become nobility through buying that office or you were somehow related to the Bourbons. So you are part of the larger empire as part of a relative of the king. So you are an aristocrat or a nobility. Basically nobility is somehow related to royalty and the larger concept of what we call as aristocracy. Now comes the third estate which is nothing but third estate which is nothing but all common nerds. Meaning anybody who does not fall in the first and the second estate falls in the third estate. So the third estate was quite diverse. You had the bourgeoisie. Bourgeoisie is nothing but the commercial classes. Commercial classes. You have the professionals. You even have workers, artisans and the peasantry in this. So basically the landlord would go into the aristocracy. So basically first second estate are the most privileged one and the third estate is everybody else, commoners. Now another important peculiarity of this system was that basically the first and the second estate pay little to no taxes meaning that the first and the second estate will pay, no, clergy used to pay a little bit, aristocracy paid nothing. Basically, they pay no taxes at all, zero tax. And all tax burden is actually on the commoners, who are technically 98% of the population. This is 1% of the population, this is 1% of the population. So 2% of the population, the most wealthiest because they used to control close to 30% of all land, fertile land was controlled by this 2%. So basically the two wealthiest classes were not taxed nothing or zero and on the other hand all tax burden fell on the third estate itself. So basically when you look at the system itself you will realize that it's a system of social exclusion the system of discrimination, discrimination against the third estate itself. So you have the first estate, second estate, third estate, clergy, nobility, commoners or anybody who is not a clergy or an aristocrat. Then you have 30% and 70%. Now the basic point is the basic best land is with the church and the nobility. They are 2% the most, the most wealthiest class but taxed zero and on the other hand the third estate itself has all the tax burden so it is a system based on technically discriminating and excluding the third estate so the third estate technically is the whole population itself only the upper two actually enjoy all the privileges and all the tax benefits now this is the situation Ironically, in 1789 itself, which is the starting of the French Revolution, the whole society used to look like this. It has come out of feudalism, but it looks like feudalism itself. So remember this structure because this structure is why there will be a major, major issue when a representative body will be called. But basically, this needs to be totally clear in your mind. First estate, first estate second estate, third estate, 30% of all land is controlled. All the wealth is concentrated with the first and second estate. Third estate will give all the taxes. Fact is all the burden is on the third estate. This is the estate system. Now if you understand this well, the representative institution, how decisions used to be taken via the king was through a body called the estate general. Now the estate general, you should remember between 1612 and 1789 which is the French Revolution itself it actually never met what they met was before 1612 so the last meeting of this body itself was in 1612 
so which is in 17th century and this in turn meant that all decisions after that bourbons were taking on their own with the first and the second estate but the estate general is important because it, it is the trigger through which the french revolution will start so what is the estate general so the estate general is how the king will take some decision so the king what he did was he called all the three estates together in a meeting called the estate general so you have the first estate the second estate the third estate which used to come and meet at one place there used to be and I'm not going to give you the exact number but for example hundred members who used to represent the first estate second estate hundred members again so they represent these are technically representatives of the first and the second estate and close to 600 members used to come out of the 98 percent of the population 600 were called as representatives of the third estate and one percent and one percent you had hundred and hundred members basically it's like all of them coming together and taking a decision but the peculiarity of the system was not that it was non-representative it was that though this is 98 percent of the population each estate has one vote meaning that total three votes so one percent of the population has one vote one percent of the population has one vote but 98 percent of the population still has one vote now basically it's an odd number what happened was any decision when it used to be taken all were taken in favor of the first and the second estate because they used to come together in two two is to one basically the king when he wanted something to happen he used to always ask the first and the second estate to go favorable with his decision and this one vote was always not enough for actually overruling the might of the first and the second estate so the only representative institution which was there we already understand the structure what was now there itself was this first and second estate and third estate concept which had also not meant since 1612 but the basic point is it was an institution in which the first and the second estate would always push all the taxes all the burdens on the third estate because they had the majority of the votes this is an important concept because it will be this body when it will be called it will be the triggering of the French Revolution itself so now we understand how the society looks now we also understand what is the representative institution remember 6 16 12 it did not meet and the last time it will be called will be in 1789 and it will be the French Revolution itself but basically this is the long-term problem the long-term problem is that the society is discriminatory it is discriminatory and more than that it is also based on exclusion of the third estate and basically people had no real representation so there is no real representation and more than that all the burden is on the third estate so by 17 18th century basically this third estate will start to become more and more frustrated because you should know one thing after the age of discovery which is after 1492 the merchant merchant class mercantile class or and the specifically the in the small artisanal industries handloom industries basically they were gain, gaining a lot of money so the bourgeoisie what we call as professionals as commercial bodies the bourgeoisie was getting more and more money so for the third estate an important strata was the bourgeoisie bourgeoisie he was getting more money so he was having economic mobility but he was technically not having social mobility so social mobility was denied because they were part of whatever they would do they could be as big as a big landlord but still they will be counted in the third estate so basically it's about this non-representative nature frustration which is building up and add to all of this the economic crisis and you will see that there's a major issue with regards to france itself so now we've understood what is the structure then we understand what is the representative institution now the other problem is administrative deficiencies which will in turn lead to economic crisis so there's no representative institution we already know that over and above that inefficiency and corruption has crept through both on the part of the church which takes the tith which is again a separate tax which they have to take and the state itself both are very very corrupt absence of local self-government and excessive centralization with the king louis the 15th and 16th also had a lot of power in that regard now 
the privileged groups opposed all reforms meaning the first and the second estate fully fully opposed any form of reforms in which any form of tax burden would fall on the the first and the second estate now the point is all this compounds into an economic issue which in turn will lead to a major issue take see you have a society which is based on which is based on discrimination this society itself is also based on a lot of major issues with regards to what we call as a representative body which is technically not even representative so the both sides we are there is no representation political frustration society itself is very very feudalistic or looks like a feudal order itself then the next point is louis the 16th and louis the 15th both were technically useless rulers why louis the 15th fought the austrian war of succession the seven years war but technically gained nothing both times defeated to the british so he was now draining the whole uh, french treasury itself on the other hand louis the 16th he actually helped the americans in the american revolution basically american revolution was fully funded by the french that is why the statue of liberty was also given to the americans by the french so the american revolution was fully funded by the french but basically what did the french gain nothing america once it becomes a separate country it becomes it gives it gives nothing to the french so basically both of them were spending unnecessarily into wars which had no real gain for france there was no bank of france so whatever money they used to take they used to take from private individuals at a very very big high interest rate itself so basically there is no bank they are spending on something which technically should not be even needed and basically they have an extravagant life and they are totally disconnected from what is happening on the ground because all this was context that the society is like this but when we come to 1780s and 1770 1760s period there is a major economic crisis which is brewing up and what becomes a new normal are what are called bread riots meaning people are now looking for food food grain shortage was there famines were happening and there is a very uh, a representative instance of how these bourbons were totally disconnected mary antonia who is the wife of louis the 16th she was asked that why are the people fighting on or she asked her servants that why are the people fighting on the streets for so the servant said that they don't have bread to eat so she said that if they don't have bread to eat why don't they eat cake basically she had no understanding that cake is also made out of bread and she was so disconnected from the world that everything was extravagant for them so basically the extravagance of the bourbons and the crisis itself was a thing which was brewing up in france and what will happen is they are fighting unnecessary wars i'll come to the american revolution part later but basically it's an economic crisis in its making so by 1780s there was a, a failure in the harvest causing famine and inflation so basically now hunger became the new reality of france so france is totally in tatters so in the 1718 and just on the eve of the french revolution in 1789 itself you have what is called the great fear great fear is that the peasants started to believe that they would technically die of hunger and that was an aristocratic conspiracy that they would make everybody die because the population was also rising so several rural unrest will happen which are called the bread rights people will look for bread there is a major failure in the harvest louis the 15 16 don't care technically louis the 16 does not care the society itself is geared for the first and the second estate people are becoming more and more frustrated the rumors of aristocratic plot to starve off everybody is becoming more and more pronounced people armed themselves and now started to attack manor houses peasants themselves became very 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 frustrated basically if you add everything society is discriminatory no form of representative institution bread riots are happening food is not there inflation is rising extravagance of louis the 15th and 16th was already draining the treasury they don't have real really have technically have no money itself this will in turn add to the immediate cause now what are the long term causes then long term causes would be nothing but the social order the lack of representative institutions add to it the fact that 
there is economic crisis because of the policies policies and spending you don't have to go into too much of the detail in this policy and spending and over and above that there is famines and agricultural food shortage now this is standard now the point is this was there for a very long time so why is that the french revolution is going to happen in 1789 itself it is because of the first important immediate cause which is the enlightenment enlightenment was a very important intellectual movement which happened in 18th century itself you have very very important personalities such as rousseau voltaire kant locke who talk about very important concepts i'm not going to go into that or too much detail it's optional level basically you need to understand that there are certain things which they're talking about for example voltaire will talk about the fact that how church and state need to be different for him he believed that rationality was important reason was more important and the church superstition wasn't so voltaire is going to attack the relationship between the church and the state on the other hand you have montesquieu who's going to talk about the separation of power so that power of the judiciary legislative and executives all need to be different so separation of powers will come through then you have kant and you have rousseau who will talk about a very important concept called social contract that the state is produced out of the will of the people meaning the people are the power not the king and there's a social contract between everybody where we are ready to give up some form of our freedom reasonable restrictions on our freedom in order to produce a state which can then protect our natural rights so everybody has the natural right of liberty freedom and property and for protection of that the state is needed so basically social contract theory of rousseau and kant was then technically attacking the absolutist monarchy itself so the enlightenment ideas were very very significant in the american revolution also because people will start to diff uh, think differently but basically what enlightenment will do is it will add very very important concepts what are the important concepts liberty freedom representation the fact that these are basic rights the fact that property needs to be protected the fact that there has to be constitutional form of government montesquieu said so basically the enlightenment will change the way people will think that is why the same situation will be there for a very very long time but by 1789 people were getting frustrated the bourgeoisie was now reading the philosophies or the philosophers of uh, of france and now they are talking about more representation and that will be the trigger but the most important trigger for the french revolution itself is the american war of independence which we have already which you already would know is a series of acts from the stamp act to the t act to the intolerable acts but the war of independence will happen between 1775 first continental congress second continental congress and then they will fight till 1783 and then write their own constitution itself but what louis the 16th did was by funding the french funding this war of independence he exaggerated the economic crisis so before i go to the french revolution itself which we will not talk about the course you need to understand something see socially there is a lot of discrimination which is happening we already know that then there is an economic crisis which is rising or was already at its peak that is also there that is also there no issues then we have the long term cause of the fact that there is no representative bodies we also know that now add to it the fact that people were now listening to the philosophers who were talking about separation of power now the point was that the population in 1700 meaning the third estate in the 1700 was different and in 1789 was different because now they were much more radicalized by the concept of enlightenment so basically enlightenment created the intellectual context in which people's thinking started to change now comes the main trigger which is the american revolutionary war that will exaggerate the economic crisis and there comes how the french revolution will start how the french revolution actually starts is that once the american war of independence will end in 83 itself now the french monarchy will get to know how bankrupt they are so basically in 1781 itself see the, the french prime minister the french finance minister his name was necker necker in 1780 81 itself had actually pointed out to louis the 16th that 
France does not have the money which it is giving to the Americans to fight the war. So as soon as Louis XVI got to know, he technically removed Necker. Necker was then succeeded by a person called Calon. Calon was actually the one who called in 81, 1781, an important institution, 71, 81, 81, 82. He called an important institution called the Committee or the Assembly of Notables. In that, what he did was, for the first time, because the crisis was very, very big, he proposed that the first and the second estate should also pay some taxes. But they fully rejected it. The, the assembly of notables is also the same thing. Representatives of the first, second and third estate used to come. Third estate not fully represented it again. But the basic point was first and second estate fully rebelled. And this is what is called the aristocratic revolt of just before the French Revolution. Once Louis XVI will get to know that Calon went and said that first and second estate should pay some taxes, he will then remove Calon also. And Calon will then be, will be then succeeded by a person called Brigny. Brigny was the one who now said that because he knew that he can't go and ask the first and the second estate to do anything, he is the one who will say that in May of 1789, let us call the estate general. And the concept was that it had not meant since 1612. The basic point was that by calling this estate general in 1789, they were going to do the same thing. The first, second and third estate would meet and the new taxes in order to bring them back out of the bankruptcy would technically push the tax on the third estate. But what Brigny did not know, what Louis XVI did not know, was that this third estate was totally different. And I will not go into the details again, that is now the course of the French Revolution. Basically, once the third estate will go and ask Louis XVI for more power, they will say, at least give us two votes. Louis XVI will not do that. They will not be allowed to enter into the Versailles Palace. Then they will go to the tennis court and there will, they will take the tennis court oath, which is called that we, the third estate, transform ourselves into the National Assembly and we will now write a constitution. And thereafter, they will first write the 1791 constitution. But then France, French Revolution will start to go totally out of context. 1793, first 1791 constitutional monarchy. 1793, they will become a republic by uh, guillotining Louis XVI. Then it will be the reign of terror period of Robespierre. 1795, they will write another constitution. 1794, Thermidorian reaction. And then 1799, Finally, then will come uh, the 1791 is the directory rule, 1799 is consulate rule, Napoleon will capture power, but that is the separate part. Now, the basic point which you need to understand here is very simple. Before I go to the questions itself, what do you need to know for the exam? It's a long event, it has a lot of nuances. First, long term causes, immediate causes. Long term causes is that the basic point, remember, basic point is that. Society was socially exclusionary, third estate was totally ostracized, had no power, all taxes, fully poverty stricken. Economically, they were in a crisis because too much extravagance, un unnecessary wars, they were in totally involved in unnecessary wars and no representative institutions that too based on total form of deceive in, uh, or deceive, deceived politics or deceptive politics basically. Then the immediate causes become the enlightenment. The enlightenment changed the people itself. That is the context in which the American Revolution will happen. That will bankrupt the French uh, monarchy so much that they would now need to introduce reforms. First reform, Necker tells them. Calon, then Brigny. Brigny is the one who triggers the whole French Revolution through the estate general itself, thereby introducing the National Assembly, then the Legislative Assembly, then the National Convention, Robespierre, then Directory Rule, and then Napoleon himself. That is a long story in itself. Basically, today's lecture was about causes. Remember, causes are long-term and immediate, long-term because of the structure of the French society itself, and the economic bankruptcy which was inherent to this way they were running the country, and that will be compounded. It was actually the trigger will be the American Revolutionary War bankruptcy, which will in turn push the French people. The third estate will say, we don't accept this form of subservience. We want more power. We want constitutional monarchy. We want a new type of uh, concept of democracy in our country. And America uh, was already the first proper democratic republic 
country in that point of time in the world. So with this, I hope all this is clear. French Revolution causes within 30 minutes is actually a big thing in itself. It has a lot of nuances, but I've tried to just give you a basic overview. Now let's look at the questions and understand the basic point. Yeah, taxes were numerous. You have tith, which is paid by the uh, by the peasants and everybody else to the church and there are other taxes also which the state collects. You don't have to remember the names that is even honors level don't have to remember the names. French and American revolution are similar and different in two ways see they are technically quite different in that regard because their bases are different. French revolution is a political revolution. It's a political nationalism which is based, they were already together culturally, they go for a revolution based on political ideas. So they, it's a um, instance of political nationalism. On the other hand, American revolution is an instance of economic nationalism. They became a country because they wanted to rebel against mercantilism or it was economic response, economic critique to the British policies. So both are quite different in that regard because it's one is economic nationalism, one is political nationalism, similar in the sense that both wanted democracy and enlightenment is common to both and there's a connection between these two because the French revolution will be triggered, triggered because of the American revolution. It is the American revolution funding which will in turn produce the context in which French revolution became possible. As I said, enlightenment had a very important impact on the people of France and the bourgeoisie who wanted more representative government. The concept of democracy becomes more and more important and ubiquitous because of the enlightenment itself. Perfect. Thank you. With this, I would like to end the session. I hope all this is clear. And please remember French Revolution is a nuanced topic in that regard that you need to know the immediate and the long term causes. You don't need to complicate it too much. This is the type of question which will most probably come and you will just keep it simple in the exam itself. So with this, this is done. Next, in the same week, we have the second session, which is on the Indus Valley Civilization. We'll talk about the basic sites and its characteristics. So one from world history, one from art and culture in ancient. So I hope to see you in the next session. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye-bye.